Today, we find ourselves at the Rayford State Prison here in Florida. Last time we were here, we were seeking out the crime scene locations for serial killer Ted Bundy. This prison is where he was executed. But today, we are seeking out the crime scene locations for the Gainesville Ripper, a guy by the name of Danny Rowling. You may know him because his story, his murders, inspired the movie Scream. Hello? Why don't you want to talk to me? Who is this? You tell me your name, I'll tell you mine. <laughs> I don't think so. What's that noise? Popcorn. You making popcorn? Uh-huh. I only eat popcorn at the movies. Well, I'm getting ready to watch a video. Really? What? Oh, just some scary movie. You like scary movies? Uh-huh. What's your favorite scary movie? Uh, I don't know. You have to have a favorite. What comes to mind? Um, Halloween. You know, the one with the guy in the white mask who walks around and stalks babysitters? Here in the cemetery behind the prison is the final resting place of killer Danny Rowling. There's no nameplate. He's in an unmarked grave. But even with no nameplate, his final resting place was easy to find because they bury the inmates in the order that they died. And he was executed on October 25th 2006, but right here, six feet under where I'm standing, is Ghostface. Jury took about six hours over two days to reach its recommendations. Those recommendations were unanimous and identical. Jurors deciding 12 to nothing that Danny Rowling should die in the electric chair. Danny Rowling said he killed five students to send a message to Gainesville. Today, the jury sent a message to Danny Rowling. A majority of the jury, by a vote of 12 to zero, advise and recommend to the court that it imposed the death penalty upon Danny Harold Rowling. Unanimous death recommendations for each of Rowling's murders. Danny Rowling, for whatever reason, and it's far beyond what I'll ever understand, decided to visit horror on these, on this town and on these students in ways that it's unimaginable. Rowling terrorized his victims. Sonia Larson, Christina Powell, Krista Hoyt, Manny Tabuada, and Tracy Paulus. The jury saw graphic evidence of Rowling's crimes, saw how Rowling planned his murders, saw the Danny Rowling his victims saw. Over the course of three days in Gainesville, Florida, Danny Rowling killed five students with a knife in a very grotesque and gruesome and, dare I say, creative ways. So much so that the guy who wrote the movie Scream, after reading about Danny Rowling, wrote Scream and gave us the slasher and Ghostface, the killer. Wherever I come, I've had luck. This comes my way. Wherever I go, hard luck. Is that it stay? Good luck never stays a day. A bad luck's always coming my way. We'll say after you give Mr. Rowling an opportunity to have a say. You have anything you want to say, Mr. Rowling? Well, sir. I'm going to please the court and could I address the court? Sure, say whatever you want to say. Thank you. In time. I recall the day I first saw you. I reached out to say I love you. But it was hard to say. I couldn't touch you. So tell me, baby, what were my words? All my tears from the game. Excuse me, Mr. Rowling. Down the pallet, you, Mr. Rowling. To follow, Mr. Rowling. So tell me, baby, what were my words? All my tears from the game. What were my words? All my tears from the game, baby. Just like rain. I'm standing in front of one of the sections of the 34th Street mural wall here in Gainesville. And here they have a section devoted to the victims of the Gainesville Ripper. Remember, 1990. Giant heart, and over here it has the names of all five. And in 
in a way, it's been swallowed up by all the remnants of the graffiti, but there's also a little plaque here that's permanently here that has the names on them all and that they'll never be forgotten. That's beautiful. You know, I have to say it is rather nice to see something here permanently on display for the victims of the Gainesville Ripper, Danny Rowling. About a year ago, we visited the crime scene locations of Ted Bundy, serial killer Ted Bundy. Uh, didn't really see anything anywhere, including outside the sorority house, devoted in remembrance to the victims. So Gainesville, well done. It's beautiful. You did it in your own way with the mural wall, and it's perfect. Known as the Gainesville Ripper, Danny Rowling, who inspired Scream, killed five people over three days with a knife in the most gruesome ways imaginable. Those killings started right here in 113. On August 24th, 1990, Rollins broke into apartment 113 and killed 17-year-old university freshman Sonia Larson and Christina Powell. They were found mutilated and stabbed to death and he had raped both women, one after she was dead. They didn't have that in the Scream movies. Jessica. At this point, we should also point out that the movie Scream is loosely based on the killings. Now, real life is definitely a lot scarier and definitely a lot gruesomer, if that's even a word, than the movie. But it all began right here. So we got to kind of stop right here and talk about this for a second. You see, some of the places that we visit have a very macabre and very dark and gory history, such as this one. So pulling up to this location, I kind of had a feeling that something might happen. Didn't really expect that. It didn't escalate. The police weren't called. We left peacefully. With every video we shoot, we really try to be as respectful as possible. Danny Rowling, the way he killed people, was actually pretty disgusting. The body that was found inside that duplex, it was straight out of a horror film. When the police finally entered the duplex, they found 18-year-old Krista Hoyt's headless body, naked, propped up on the edge of the bed, looking down at a sea of blood on the floor. Her head was strategically positioned on a bookcase behind her looking at the body. It's pretty foul. So it kind of makes sense that pulling up there that some of these residents who have been there since 1990 would have that reaction seeing us pointing a camera at that duplex. Now that address wasn't easy to find. I kind of had to search police records to look for the exact address and which bungalow. Letter M. August 27, 1990, this beautiful building that's behind me wasn't here. At the time, it was called Gatorwood Apartments. Rawling snuck in at three o'clock in the morning and killed Tracy Pauls and Manuel Tabotis. I'm probably screwing up that name still in a very gruesome way. This was his third set of victims. For some time after the murders, Gatorwood Apartments sat abandoned like a skeleton until it was eventually torn down. And this, the bar trim apartments here in Gainesville were built in its place. I often wonder if the people who live here on this property know 
the horrific history. Wherever I come, I've had luck. It's come my way. Wherever I go, hard luck. Is that it stays? Good luck never stays a day. A bad luck's always coming my way. 